Today's episode is gonna be a little bit different. I'm sitting here at the record time section because today is kind of a big giant record time, but it's about the invention of a very special pedal, the Y pedal. So we're gonna roll the intro and get with it. I hold in my hands one of the hardest things to find that I've ever found. It is the original 1967 Vox Wawa demonstrational record. It's not a vinyl because it's actually made on cardboard. There's perforated edges and it was torn out and it still plays. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited. So I'm gonna play this just like I did with the world's first pedal demo with the Maestro FZ1. That's an episode you can go watch, link below if you wanna see it. But we're gonna play this and listen to it together and I'll comment if I think something's interesting. But before we do this, let's talk about the invention of the wah really briefly. If you watched Pedals the Musical, you kind of saw the story, Del Casher and Brad Plunkett. Well, let's go a little bit before that. So Vox is a company, Jennings, in the UK, Charing Cross Road, they're there in London, Denmark Street area, and they create the AC15, AC30, and some other products. There is an engineer named Dick Denny, and Dick Denny is the biggest deal in guitar still that a lot of people don't know about. He invented those amps. He invented the 816 booster, which is probably where the fuzz face came from. He invented tons and tons of amazing things. And one of the things he invented was the Vox Super Beetle amplifier. So in 1964, 70 million people watched the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, and Vox went from being a mom and pop shop with Mr. Jennings running it, some employees, and Mr. Dick Denny Engineering into a full empire, which included building an LA Hollywood area shop where they built things, a big factory. Well, it's interesting because Dick built this Super Beetle amp. They were capitalizing on the fact that the Beatles used the Vox amps on the Ed Sullivan Show, and in that amp is a mid control. Well, in LA, there's a guy named Del Casher, and he plays on movie soundtracks, like, or TV shows, like Green Acres. He also played on the Lawrence Welk Show. He's a pretty big deal, kind of a Les Paul style character, and he works for Vox as an artist demonstration guy. And then there's Brad Plunkett. He's an engineer like Dick Denny, but he's stateside. And there's some other people, but I won't get into the weeds. Basically, uh, Brad Plunkett is turning the control knob on a Super Beetle, working on it, and Dell's in the other room and he hears the sound wah-wah coming from that knob control. Dell runs in, freaks out. He's always heard this sound for the guitar. And uh, basically they take a Vox Continental organ volume control pedal. Here's one right here. So this is a 65 model, I think. It's just a volume pedal. You put one into the organ out and one out to your amplifier. And yeah, quiet, loud. So they take that mid control circuit out of the amp and they put it into that enclosure. I definitely remember going to Stan Lee Cutler, head of engineering and said, Stan, I know that this can be lifted out of the amplifier. So can you get me the guy who did that? He said, well, it was Brad Plunkett. So I said, tell Brad, I want the the breadboard put into the pedal. So they had Brad put it into the pedal on my request. And what we have is the invention of the first Wawa's. This is one of the first 100 Wawa's ever made. Notice the sticker logos here. Really cool piece of history. But that's how it came to be, the Wawa. That's 1966. And in 1967, they go on to produce this product. But there's a little bit of a problem. When Del Casher gets Brad to put the circuit into the enclosure and he has the effect of his dreams, the Vox people don't get it. They think it's a product for trumpet players. I'm really hoping that someone just put in the wah-wah trumpet sound because it's a horrible idea. But trumpet was big at the time and guitar was still kind of who knows. I played it for Joe Benaron. And I said, listen to the pedal now. It really expresses all these sounds. He said, oh, yeah, but guitar players don't have enough money to buy a pedal. 
But in the Lawrence Welk's, Lawrence Welk's orchestra, they've got four trumpets. They could all buy a pedal. And the saxophone players would be five saxophones. They'd all buy. Right there is nine pedals we could sell. Well, there's only one guitar player in Lawrence Welk's orchestra. I said, no, you don't understand, Joe. Dell's being sarcastic with the Vox suits, and he says, yeah, great idea. Just call Clyde McCoy and slap his name on it. Well, they do. I remember my brother had a recording of a guy named Clyde McCoy who had the trumpet of the Sugar Blues, wah, 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 mm -hmm. wah, 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 wah. I said, why don't you call Clyde McCoy, jokingly. I figured Clyde McCoy was dead. He wasn't, he was still alive. They call Clyde McCoy, they offer him 500 bucks to put his face on the back plate here. We'll show a picture. And the first ever production models are called the Clyde McCoy, and it's technically the first ever signature guitar pedal ever made. Just like I have the Paul Gilbert signature, or many other brands have an artist signature product. Well, this was the first ever signature guitar pedal, and it was for a trumpet player who was kind of washed up and uh, never played guitar. Well, all that said, the wah became very popular, but there was this problem right there in 67. Dell wanted this to be a hit with guitar players, but Vox did not believe that it could be. So Dell says, I'm gonna go to my Hollywood Hills studio in my garage, and I'm gonna cut a record with some friends. And this is what he did. And proof of how much Vox didn't believe in the idea. They only gave him a budget to put it on cardboard. And there's not many of these left. You listen to them, they got thrown away. Instead of them putting it on a vinyl record, they put it on a piece of cardboard with plastic coating. I thought, this guy has no faith in the guitar wah pedal. None. He didn't want to spend the money for it. And that's why yeah. nobody has heard it. This is the evidence that Vox did not think that the wah pedal would ever work for guitar. But tell that to Rage Against the Machine or Kurt Hammett, I guess. Let's put the record on and listen to it. It's an old cardboard record. This is not gonna be audiophile. It hisses and crackles, but we're gonna, we're gonna pull some of the noise out. It's just the experience of listening to a cardboard record that everyone in 67 was hearing. I like to think that Hendrix heard it this way. I like to think that Frank Zappa heard the wah this way. We don't really know, but it's a really cool piece of history. So let's check it out. My first thought is, that's fairly annoying. And you can tell they don't know what Wah's gonna be. They've never heard Bulls on Parade. They've never heard Shaft. They've never heard any of that. But Dell had vision enough to know that this effect was really cool and different. It's crazy to hear this and then think about how I use Wah. It is not this, but this got us to where we like Wah to be now. <laughs> Vox's fabulous new wah-wah pedal opens the door to a variety of great new sounds. Here's how it operates. The guitar plugs into the wah-wah pedal with a standard chord. Then the pedal plugs into the amp with another chord. The entire foot goes on the pedal. When the foot is rocked forward, the guitar sound becomes sharp. As the foot is rocked back, the sound becomes mellow. Now we'll play a lick and slowly rock the foot forward, going from mellow to sharp. By rocking the foot back and forth, we get the wah-wah effect. The same applies for chords. The wah-wah pedal lets you go from mellow rhythm to sharp lead. Quickly and all without dropping a beat. I will say, 
my favorite use of the wah is that. Not how they played it, but a wah is basically an inductor mid-range equalizer, and you sweep it with your foot. It's the Dick Denny circuit from the Super Beetle Ant. What's great is putting your wah before or after distortions. I like it after, and you can just mess with your tones of your dirt in a very interesting way. I love having it back or toe down or leaving it in the middle. Some people call that a cocked wah, like you would cock a gun ready to shoot it. I love that fixed wah sound, and it's cool that they were noticing that right there. Dell kind of saw that. Maybe he didn't see it, but he at least was headed into seeing it the way that I like to use it. So bright. Now let's listen to the wah wah pedal in action. This is like acid surf music or something. I don't quite know the genre. It's LA, surf is huge. We're not quite psychedelic. Del Casher's playing theme songs for like TV shows and jazz. It's a really strange genre. I just wanna point that out. I'm, I'm not quite sure where this lies. In the comments below, what is the genre? Let's argue over that. A little bright. The wah wah pedal lets you make your guitar growl. The wah wah pedal used with distortion lets you make the wild sound of the east the sea tar. <laughs> And listen to the funky bass guitar sound you get with a wah wah pedal. I think that's the Batman song. It's not the Batman song. Bass wah. I can't think of a single song with bass wah. Probably Chili Peppers, but I can't actually think of it. Let me know that in the comments. What's a bass wah song? Did it ever translate? Batman. The wah wah pedal brings a new sound of the twelve string. This is funny because. This is Dell playing guitar, by the way, if I didn't make that clear. This is actually the co-inventor, Dell, playing guitar. I went into my studio in Hollywood Hills, mm -hmm. got Jimmy Troxell, drummer, very great drummer, there were a lot of the sessions, and I said, Jimmy, we're just gonna lay, we're gonna lay 13 tracks down, one after another, another, and each track is gonna be, you know, a minute and a half. So out of the 13 songs, I picked out about five songs to demonstrate the wah pedal and how the guitar can change the sounds and make it groovy, make it growl, make it funky, make it sound like a sitar. I, I thought Joe Benaren was gonna, you know, say Del Casher, young guitarist from Hollywood featuring the wah pedal, but they didn't. Now, 12 string, he's thinking, I gotta sell this product, I gotta convince people. What's big at the time? The birds, stuff like that, that whole, that whole 12 string California thing was big as well. If you own a 12 string and you've ever used wah, I commend you because it's pretty baller. The 
wah-wah pedal lets you play groovier blues. This is interesting. From the interview I did with Dell in 2019, sitting in his living room, I asked him the question, are you aware that your creation was used by Hendrix, by Clapton? We're talking 66, 67. He was pretty oblivious to that. And this is a 67 demo. We've already heard the traces of what was about to do. Hendrix's second album, track one has wah on it. This is 67. So this is either right before or right as these mega guitar gods are using wah. But it sounds like he's never heard it because when he says blues with wah, he's playing more of a not that. He's not playing what Hendrix did. He's not playing what Clapton did. And that's interesting to me. Probably just me. I'm probably the only person that cares. So Forgive me for stopping the record for the 10th time. just heard only a fraction of the incredible effects you can make with Vox's fabulous new Wawa pedal. Make your own new and exciting sound. Play Vox's new Wawa pedal. It's just one more sound reason why Vox is what's happening to music. Now, Vox guitars, amps, and continental organ brings a new sound to guitar music, the Wawa pedal. Wawa! A new sound from Vox! That was an interesting outro song. Um, again, this is a weird year. You hear them trying to compliment a coming hippie thing and also like the Beatles. On November the 16th, 1966, at around 5.15 p.m. when everybody was ready to go home, I played it for Joe Benaren specifically. And that's when we discussed what the future of the Wah Wah pedal could be. This, an accidental creation that is the circuit from a Super Beetle amp pulled out of the amp because a man named Del Casher, who's still alive, um, wanted it thrown into the Vox Continental volume controller so he could go wah wah with his foot. I remember he told me James Brown even told him it was pointless and it wouldn't be cool. That's ironic. It's the first artist signature pedal ever, and the artist was not a guitar player, and he was simply paid 500 bucks. Um, as a pedal manufacturer, my tip to you is, when you see an artist signature pedal, make sure they actually play the pedal. It's been known over time that certain companies would put things out and the person doesn't even play them. A uh, lot of lessons here, a lot of cool stories. I like this term, Vox, it's what's happening we pull this off, this was their slogan. Slogan? This was their logo. Vox, it's what's happening. Just uh, by sheer providence, I had purchased this off of the bay, Flea Bay. It's an original 1967 Vox Rules, it's what's happening pin. You can stab your enemies with it or wear it around town. I have these two really cool pieces of Vox ephemera. I'm very proud of them. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, that's really it. 
let's do a record time inside this episode, which is essentially a record time. It's gonna be like Inception, here we go. Today's record time is brought to you by a band that's associated with this. When I first sought after this, the only thing I had ever heard is a YouTube clip where someone pulled uh, this, a different version of this. There's still a mystery there. There seems to be two versions of this, but this is the actual cardboard because I'm holding it in my hand. This is what Dell referred to. But then there's a Vox radio spot. And this radio spot is from 67. And if you go on YouTube right now, we can link it below. Um, go on YouTube, you're on YouTube. Link below. It's the electric prunes. It says the Vox Wawa. It's what's happening. And the electric prunes is a band that is demonstrating the product. Well, it turns out that Del Casher is actually a secret guitar player on these records with an actual band called the Electric Prunes. I found these in Hollywood when I was there to interview Dell. Just so happened I'd never seen any Electric Prunes records, but go check them out. It's an interesting uh, nod to the era. Um, listen to that demo. It's pretty cool. It's it's a little more what you're used to possibly when it comes to wah with a band when you hear the Electric Prunes demo. But check out these records. Underground is cool. Um, I had too much to dream last night. And this is one of the most interesting ones. Electric Prunes Mass in F minor. I cannot figure out I think this is actually like Catholic hymns. I'm almost positive. Anyway, check out the Electric Prunes. Really cool, kind of a psychedelic band caught in an era between genres changing. Yeah, check it out. Let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little bit different, but sometimes you got to do something different so that everything's not the same. Just hit like, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to get notifications of every future episode. Have a wonderful day. There is the JHSshow.com where you can find shirts and other things that you might like. And there's also a Patreon link in the description below. If you like this kind of stuff, I've done a ton of this style of talk over on Patreon. So go be a member, five bucks a month. That's like half of a coffee, right? Is that right? Coffees are like 10 bucks. Right. Just do it.